Hello and welcome to another video. Today we're going to do something a little bit different that I actually did with Harry Potter characters and that is asking AI what they think Hunger Games characters look like from the book and we're going to compare that to what they look like in the movie. The Harry Potter video did pretty well so I thought with all of the Hunger Games hype might as well do it for the Hunger Games as well. So I made a list of 21 different Hunger Games characters and for each one I got every single thing that describes their physical appearance and I'm going to put that into the AI system and just react to what comes out. If you like this video, hit that like button. It will greatly help the channel with the algorithm. And if you like what you see, hit that subscribe button. And you can also follow me on all of my socials, all of which are linked down below and all of which have similar content that I make here on this channel. Now that I've said that, let's get into it. So we're going to start off with Katniss Everdeen. So her appearance in the book is described as female, teenager, long black hair, long braid, olive skin, which is very different from Jennifer Lawrence, gray eyes, Small, thin, fierce, and determined. All right, let's see what AI came up with. Okay, very, very different than Jennifer Lawrence. Like, night and day difference. They did a good job with the olive skin and the gray eyes. She, of course, has olive skin and gray eyes because she's from the seam in District 12. And there, they all look different than the merchant section, which is blonde hair and blue eyes, which is actually where Katniss's mother is from. But yeah, she got her father's traits, who is from the seam. And honestly... That's pretty freaking accurate for what I pictured in the book because I did read the book before the movies even came into existence. Fun fact, I actually had to read the first Hunger Games book for a summer reading assignment when I was going into I think ninth grade and honestly it was the best summer reading I ever did and I wrote the best book report of my life. And here I am all these years later making a career of this series that I was forced to read in school. Full circle moment right there. But yeah, very accurate to the book, pretty much exactly how I pictured her when I read the first book. All the way back in, I think, 2010. All right, next we have Gail Hawthorne. He's described uh, male, teenager, dark hair, olive skin, gray eyes, tall, handsome, manly, muscular, strong, good looking, and gorgeous. I believe the gorgeous part was said by Joanna Mason, by the way. But yeah, let's see what AI comes up with. Realistically, he looks like he's related to Katniss because they're both from the seam. So let's see if that pans out. Okay. Yeah, I mean, not really what I pictured. Um, he looks more Mexican, I think. But yeah, I guess like he does have the olive skin. It doesn't really look like he's related to the Katniss that the last AI gave us. Yeah, I don't know. Like definitely handsome. Like he, they definitely got the good looks of Gale down. But I don't know. Not really what I pictured. All right, next we have Peter Malark. He's described as male, teenager, wavy hair, with which uh, Josh Hutcherson did not have. Blonde hair, which he did have, blue eyes, pale skin, stocky, handsome, long eyelashes. Let's see what AI came up with. Okay. Uh, not what I pictured. Again, not what I pictured. Um, but yeah, I could see it. They got the wavy blonde hair, the blue eyes. Um, but yeah, he, as I was saying, uh, the merchant section has blonde hair and blue eyes in District 12. And he is from the merchant section. So that's why he has those traits. But yeah, not really what I pictured. So far, I feel like we're like one for three so far. Katniss was good. Gail and Peta, not great. <laughs> I don't know. Let me know what you guys thought. Like, is this the book accurate Peta and Gail that you pictured when you first read the book? Let me know in the comments below. Next, we have Hamish Abernathy. Uh, he's described as male, adult, dark hair, curly hair. Very dark and curly hair is not what Woody Harrelson had. Gray eyes middle-aged, sloppy, drunk, tired, sickly, sad. Wow. Just from that description, it tells you how rough of a life Hamish had. But yeah, let's see what uh, AI came up with. Interesting. Honestly, I think that's pretty accurate. They got the gray eyes. He definitely looks like he's been through hell and back, just like the real Hamish. I don't know why he has, like, snow on the top of his head. That's a weird thing that the AI came up with. But, yeah, a very defeated man um, from the description. And, honestly, yeah, a very defeated man in this picture. So, I think that's pretty accurate. It's interesting how different it is from Woody Harrelson, though. Like, it looks nothing like Woody Harrelson. Especially with, as I said, the dark and curly hair, while Woody Harrelson had more blonde hair. All right, next is Effie Trinket. She's described as female, adult, flamboyant, colorful wig, colorful outfit, confident, and stressed. Let's see what AI comes up with. Wow, yeah. <laughs> that definitely looks like a capital citizen right there. Um, and yeah, she does look very stressed, just like I said uh, in, this, in the description. It, yeah, honestly, like, it looks like an outfit that Effie would have worn, I think. She's a little bit older than I probably would have said she would be. 
Um, because you have to remember, like, she was still early in her career based on the fact that she was put in, like, District 12, the least important district, and she was hoping to get a promotion to a better district, showing that she was early in her career, meaning that she was probably on the younger side. Although that's not confirmed, it's just context clues. But yeah, other than the age, I think that is a pretty book accurate Effie. Next, we have Coriolanus Snow as an old man, and we are going to do uh, the younger version of Snow next. But let's do uh, the older one first. He's described as male, old, small, thin, white hair, thick lips, lip filler, white rose lapel, cold eyes, snake-like, and evil. Let's see what AI comes up with. <laughs> yeah, I I see like they, they, they took the evil thing and kind of like made him a devil with the fire in the background and the red in the background. But overall, I think that... Like, they have most parts right. I think Donald Sutherland's hair was a little bit more wild than the snow in the book, so I think this white hair is a little bit more accurate. But the lips, I tried to put in thick lips and lip filler because in the book, he his lips kind of, like, folded over and, like, were huge and stretched over his face, I think was how it was described in the book. And, yeah, AI didn't do that. I, I get that's really hard to, like, come up with in AI, but I think other than the lips i think it's pretty accurate all right next we have young coriolanus snow who was described as male teenager 18 years old good looking gorgeous blue eyes blonde hair curly hair in shape and confident well okay so he has fire behind him again um yeah that honestly that is a pretty perfect depiction of the snow from Ballad of songbirds and snakes not sure why he has a backpack uh that's a little bit weird the curly blonde hair is spot on um, the handsomeness, obviously, uh, it's a good looking dude right there. And I think Tom Blythe was a really, really good casting choice. And though they look a little bit different, honestly, I would take either one. Like, I would take this AI version, but I would also take Tom Blythe. I think that they're both great in their own way, and both are very book accurate. Alright, next we have Primrose Everdeen. She's described as female, child, 12 years old, fair skin, blonde hair, blue eyes, small, scared, and timid. AI, what you got for us? Alright, yeah, a little bit younger than, it looks way younger than 12 years old actually, like a very baby face. But other than that, yeah, it has the blue eyes, blonde hair, which she got from her mother, um, because, so Katniss's mother, Mrs. Everdeen, was born in the merchant section, the richer part of District 12, but then moved to the seam so that she could marry Katniss's father because she fell in love and wanted to move her life for him. Prim got the looks of the mom from the merchant section, while Katniss got the looks of their dad from the scene. Going back to Prim though, um, too young, looks way too young, but other than that, I guess, yeah, it's pretty good. Next, we have Mrs. Everdeen, uh, Katniss and Prim's mother. She's described as female, adult, pretty, fair skin, blonde hair, blue eyes, sad, wandering eyes that look but don't see. Whew. That's a that's a deep line right there. All right, let's see uh, what AI has for us for Mrs. Everdeen. That's, that's pretty much exactly what I pictured. Again, she has the blonde hair and blue eyes because I just went over. She's from the merchant section. And yet, honestly... The wandering eyes that look but don't see? That was perfectly made by the AI. But yeah, you can tell from this picture that she's been through a lot, which is, adds up with the Mrs. Everdeen from the book. Obviously, she wasn't the greatest mother to Katniss, um, who kind of had to take over as the caretaker for Prim. And yeah, I think that the AI captures all of that pretty perfectly. All right, next we have Joanna Mason. I had female, in her 20s, short spiky hair, brown hair, brown eyes, strong, courageous, brave, determined, and angry. All right, let's see what AI has for Joanna. That That is honestly exactly what I pictured. It looks like she even has like the lumber uh, like clothes and pack on. That's perfect. Um, and yeah, it really did get her angry and determined face in there. Like you can tell that she just wants to freaking kill Snow. Again, like the AI just captures all of that so perfectly. AI is so cool, man. It really is. So, bonus one, I'm gonna do Joanna Mason from Mockingjay. And I had all of the same things, but I added sad, distraught, defeated, sickly, and instead of short spiky hair, I had bald. So, let's see what, let's see what we get. Again, yeah, pretty, pretty accurate. Um, yeah, wait, hang on. Let me do a little side-by-side, -side, compare these faces. 
Yeah, the the faces are pretty close. The nose is a little bit uh, thinner on this, on the one that I did last time. The one where from Mockingjay, you can tell that she is just so lost, so distraught after that torturing. Yeah, honestly, like AI has been knocking it out of the park. It either like knocks it out of the park, or I'm like, no, that's that's not it. <laughs> All right, next we're gonna do Finnick O'Dare, and he's described as male in his 20s, tall, athletic, chiseled, tan skin, bronze hair, green eyes, strong, good-looking, handsome, gorgeous, defined jawline. I feel like this is about to give us like the best looking man ever. <laughs> Let's see, yeah. <laughs> you know, he kind of looks like the guy that played Gloss. Uh, he's, he's a pretty big actor, I forget his name though. But uh, yeah, he kind of looks like the guy that played Gloss in uh, Catching Fire. They got the green eyes perfectly, and also with like the chiseled jawline. I feel like <laughs> I feel like I shouldn't have this guy on the screen while I'm on the screen because I don't want to be compared to like this perfect human being. But yeah, like good-looking guy, pretty much exactly how I pictured Finnick. Maybe a little bit more defined in the jaw than I would have pictured when I was reading the book for the first time. But other than that, I think pretty book accurate. Next, we're going to do some uh, Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes characters with Lucy Gray Baird. She's described as female, dark hair, curly hair, which uh, Rachel Zegler did not have. She had straight hair. Pretty, blue eyes, poor. <laughs> yeah, poor. <laughs> That's just like a trait that was listed. Confident, braided hair, model good looks, hidden under rags. What a line. And eyes that study whatever they're looking at. Interesting. All right. Let's see what AI has for Lucy Gray Baird. Very different than Rachel Zegler, but this is honestly kind of what I pictured when I read the book for the first time, especially with that curly hair. Like I always pictured her having super curly hair just as it's depicted here. And honestly, yeah, like the model good looks that are hidden under rags, um, you can kind of see it. I guess like she, they kind of showed that by making her a little bit sad and distraught a bit, I guess. And eyes that study whatever they're looking at. Yeah, like I feel like this picture is staring into my soul, studying the heck out of me right now. So yeah, that one's pretty accurate too. Good job, AI. Good job. Next, we have Cinna. He's described as male, adult, black shirt, gold eyeliner, green eyes, attractive, short brown hair. Notice it does not say anything about his skin color um, because in the book, he was not specified to be uh, black. In fact, I always pictured him to be white, and I think a, I saw on a Reddit thread like years ago that everybody else was saying the exact same thing, that when Kravitz was cast, everybody was sort of shocked that they changed the race. But the thing is, like, they didn't really change the race because he wasn't described to be white or black. But to me, I always did picture him as white. So let's see what AI has. Let's see if they think he's white or black. He is white. <laughs> According to AI, he is white. Um, but yeah, that doesn't mean anything. They just guessed, I guess. But uh, yeah, the green eyes look really good. He is very handsome and obviously incredibly different from Lenny Kravitz. Do they have the gold eyeliner? Um, not really. I mean, like, yeah, there's a little speck right here, like on the bottom left corner of the eye on the left side. But overall, though, I'm kind of happy with this. Let me know what you guys think, though. If you read the book before you saw the movie, comment below and tell me if you pictured him as white or black or any other race. I'm interested to hear your thoughts because obviously like I have my own point of view when I read the books, but I don't, everybody could be different. So yeah, comment below and let me know. Moving on, we're going to a younger tigress from Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. So she's described as female, teenager, no great beauty, which I guess kind of means not attractive, long pointed nose, skinny, golden brown eyes, Blonde curly hair. All right, let's see what we got. That's that's pretty accurate to what um, I pictured when I read the book. I feel like she could have been a little bit more plain looking, but other than that, yeah, really good depiction. Um, again, it's the curly blonde hair, just like Snow had, which um, Schaefer, I believe her name was, who played Tigress in Bow to Songbirds and Snakes, she had uh, straight blonde hair, a lot like Rachel Zegler had straight brown hair, unlike the Lucy Gray from the book who had curly hair. I feel like that's a theme in the series. They just straighten characters' hairs that are supposed to be curly haired. All right, next we have Tigress as an adult. She's described as female, adult, tiger tattoos all along her face, flattened nose, skinny, stretched skin from cosmetic surgeries. I feel like this one's going to be really hard for AI to get like tiger tattoos on the face. I don't know if they're going to be able to do it, but 
We'll see. Oh, they did it. Oh, wow. I'm really impressed that they actually did that. Yeah, I think that the nose is a little bit too big, though. That's the only thing I can really point out in this. Obviously, she had a larger nose when she was a kid. So when she got older, she got those cosmetic surgeries and made her nose like really, really tiny because she just hated the big nose so much. But yeah, I'm impressed that they got like the tiger tattoos and it looks really cool. I think the tattoos probably would have been all over her face, but honestly... I'm happy with that. I'm impressed with AI. All right, next we have Alma Coyne. She's described as female, 50 years old, gray hair, shoulder length hair, hair looks like a wig, gray eyes, manipulative, proud, and powerful. All right, let's see what we got. Honestly, that looks almost exactly like Julianne Moore, who played Coyne in the movie. It makes me wonder if the AI like knew I was describing Coyne from the description and just took a picture of her, um, which is interesting. Uh, AI is something else man it really is but yeah they got the gray eyes and honestly i think that the movie's version of coin's hair was absolutely perfect like the way that it was um described as a wig in the book like it really does look like a wig in the movie the only weird thing was like the white streak that came down here while everything else was a bit darker but anyway yeah i think this is a pretty accurate coin but i think if you take her face her eyes and all of that and put the hair from the movie on her that would be the most accurate coin Going from one psychopath to another, we have Dr. Gall. She's described as female, adult, gray hair, frizzy hair, evil, mad scientist. Notice she was not described as being black, nor having two different colored eyes, which is something that Viola Davis had in the movie. Let's see what they cooked up. That honestly is exactly what I pictured when I read Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes for Gall. I like the side profile too. <laughs> Uh, we didn't get that for any other character. That's weird that we got it for this one. But yeah, this is exactly what I pictured. Um, honestly, like the stern look on her face and everything, it's it's perfect. It really is. Next, we have Beady Ladier. He's described as male, adult, ashen skin, black hair, glasses, smart, intelligent. I was curious what ashen skin was, um, and I went online and I discovered that it is basically another way to describe someone as black. I'm curious, though, if Ashen skin is going to be enough for them to be able to know that he's supposed to be black. I guess we'll see. I mean, AI is pretty smart. Let's see what they come up with. Yeah, they they knew. I don't know if he's black, though. I, I don't know. He's not white. <laughs> um, yeah, he looks pretty accurate to what I thought. Uh, definitely, like, very intelligent. Glasses are on point. I love the little streaks of white, too. Because, uh, honestly, like, that is about the age that he was, like, where he would start getting those streaks of white because he had won his games so many years before the third quarter quell, the 75th Hunger Games, where he went back in the arena. Overall, very accurate. I'm happy with that one. Next is Rue. She's described as female, 12 years old, small, dark satiny brown skin, golden eyes, dark hair, thick hair, and happy. The fact that one of the main traits that describes her is happy when she was literally in the Hunger Games at the age of 12 years old says so much about how positive her character was. But yeah, let's see what we've got. AI. Again, like, too young. Like, Prim, like, they're the same age, and they both look too young. Like, it looks like a baby face. Other than that, though, pretty accurate. Uh, just doesn't have the golden eyes. They're more brown. I guess it's like a golden brown, but yeah. Honestly, actually, like, this one isn't very good. It's not very accurate. <laughs> Let's move on to the next one. We have Casca Highbottom. He's described as male, adult, tall, very different than Peter Dinklage, saggy skin, doped up, looks like he's sleepwalking, dreamy eyes, short hair, suit, and glasses. So I've got to say, I love the fact that they cast Peter Dinklage not because he was typecast, which most of his roles are, I feel like, but because he was the best man for the job. And, like, seeing him get typecast, it was like, oh, like, did he get this role because of that or because of his acting skills? But now, with this role, it is clear that every single role he's gotten is because of his acting skills. He is such an incredible actor, and I have so much respect for him. But let's see what Casca Highbottom looks like, according to AI. That honestly is very accurate to what I pictured when I read Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes for the first time. You can see like the lines in his face, like he is stressed, he has been through hell and back, he has been doped up too many times to count. Yeah, I think that's actually one of the better ones. Very, very accurate. That's all we have for today though. 
please let me know in the comments below what you thought of all of these AI depictions. I gave you my reaction. I want to hear your reaction. Start some conversations in the comments section. I'm excited to read all of it. And I might even jump in and give my two cents on your two cents. That's all I have for you guys today though. So I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. You can follow me on Instagram to see more of my personal life like my cute dog Loki and some behind the scenes movie flame stuff. I also do similar content on TikTok and Twitter that I do here on this channel, so if you like what I do here, check them out. All the handles are right below me and links are in the description. Over here are my wonderful patrons. If you want to be featured on the next video plus get a few other perks, become a patron today. As always, if you liked the video, hit that like button and subscribe and look out for more great movie flame videos on the way.